Today, we're talking about SEO, in particular, how you can outline your content and articles to get free organic traffic from search engines like Google. To help us today, we reached out to SEO expert Steven Schneider, who is the CEO of Trio SEO, an article writing agency that helps brands build blogs. Steven, happy to have you on the call today. Thank you. So happy to be here. All right, great. So let's dive right into it. In terms of getting traffic from the search engines, how do you structure your articles for SEO to get that traffic? What does that process look like? Yeah, so great question. So pretty much from start to finish, we always take a look at what is the primary keyword. And this is usually the, the title or the general topic that we aim to cover within that blog. And then within that is going to be pretty much a staggered approach of working through all of the, the journey or parts of the process that the reader would want to go through in order to not only find their answer, but answer some questions that they probably didn't know that they had. So if it's a answer, you know, topic or article on how to tie a tie, maybe they want to learn about other types of knots or, you know, which ones are easier or hard to make or versus, you know, whatever genre they're looking at are different materials, harder to tie, et cetera. I'm making it up on the fly, but you can kind of see that once somebody lands on their topic and that article and the question is answered, maybe there's some stuff that they didn't actually want, you know, tend to find out, but it does kind of help them go down that rabbit hole and, you know, answer that. So when it comes to structuring articles, we always immediately try to answer that question because I think everyone can agree there's nothing worse than landing on an article and then trying to scroll or navigate all the way to the bottom just to find that piece of information you came there for. So always put it right at the front of the article, make sure it's there. Even if they leave, like that's yeah, fine. Chances are they won't. They'll just figure out like, hey, this builds trust. I understand that this person knows what they're talking about. Let's see what else they have to offer. And then from there, kind of dive into those subcategories and start touching on those other topics. Hmm. So once you've got the, the keyword in place, then like you identified your, your top keyword that you're going for. Once you've done that, how do you integrate those keywords into the outlines? Yeah, so great question. So we do, you know, a comprehensive kind of strategy from the ground up for each article. So it's not as easy as just, you know, taking a look at what that primary keyword is and then answering that, moving on, adding an intro and conclusion. So what we call secondary keywords are going to be keywords that are associated to the main term that have some sort of extension or variation of that primary keyword and still kind of adds as a entry point or some sort of touch point that we can elaborate on within that article. So um, if we look at like product articles, for example, if we want to take a look at the best hiking jackets, some other secondary keywords are like how to choose a hiking jacket or what makes a great feature in this or like, you know, what is the waterproof level or is it, you know, how hot is it going to be? Like, what is the thickness layers of it? So we really kind of just want to take a look at like what are all the available options. And then once you have those, you know, options available, you take a look at one, are they relevant? And two, how do we structure them in such a way that it makes sense that the person reading that scrolls top to bottom and that they enter them in such a way that it, you know, connects each of those layers. So pretty much it's just one big psychological puzzle. Like put yourself into their per that person's point of view and see how would I read through this article? Would it make sense that I'm reading this section first and the section second? And then does it make sense that I actually want to switch these around? And so we're constantly trying to you know, envision what that pain point looks like for that person and that reader, and then just answer the question from there and see what else would they want to know and how can we just pretty much make this the best piece of content possible. Love that. And it, it's amazing how like a lot of people think of SEO as purely like a, a more analytic uh, experience. You know, you, you have to go and crunch the data and go out and do the off-page optimization, optimization as well to go ahead and increase your traffic that way. But there's a lot of psychology and salesmanship as well, where it's like, well, what is the intent here? How do I satisfy that, that intent? And then how do I move people deeper throughout the funnel? So they ultimately become a, a lead, a customer or a promoter of some sort. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much that you hit the nail on the head, like we take data and then we have to make decisions around that data. And, you know, data is only as good as that starting point, like obviously it gives us a really good roadmap from there. But the roadmap, just like anything else, if you don't expand on that and then bring it to life, then it's useless. So that's pretty much the goal of it. Now, okay, so you've got your keyword, you've got the related keywords, you're trying to walk people through that, that process, answering their initial question, addressing the intent, and then hopefully moving them down throughout the funnel. In terms of the article length, 
we were talking about this before the call. I thought you had a very unique take on this. How do you decide on the ideal article length for each of these keywords? Yeah, so we take a look at the SERPs, which stands for the search engine result page. And this is pretty much going to be the, the first page of Google or any search engine that you use. And so each of those results are there for a reason. The search engine or Google, I always refer to Google because that's the dominant one, is you placing those in such an order because it makes sense from whatever algorithm standpoint that they deem worthy to do so. And so each of those articles, you know, they probably hover around some sort of average length. And so what we do is we use tools to analyze, okay, what is the average search or what is the average word count per article for the search term? And then we kind of just work backwards from there and say, okay, if the average article is, you know, 2000 words, well, then obviously we'll aim for around that, but more doesn't always mean better. So what we do is that, you know, take a look at if, if it really just needs a thousand and we can answer that search intent with a thousand, then by all means, let's keep it short. Let's keep it concise and make sure that people are going to have a good time experience reading this article because no one's reading a four or 5,000 word article. No one wants to read a research paper or a white paper at the end of the day. So trying to keep that in mind and think about going back to the whole psychology thing, how can we be concise, but also competitive at the same time? Love that concise and competitive. And one example that you had given me before um, was the idea of like recipe sites. Like we all, mm -hmm. know, we all know that pain worst. where it's just like, man, I just want to learn how to bake some brownies. Like I don't yeah. need 3000 word dissertation on your personal history, you know? And, <laughs> and I think it's hilarious because nowadays it's like every recipe site I go to, I am so blind to everything on that site. I'm just looking for that little button. Scroll, just scroll. Yeah, exactly. Like... <laughs> just get out of my way. And, and I can't help but think that, I mean, Google is a monopoly for a reason, right? They're right. smart. They, they know what they're doing they're going to figure a way to get around that eventually. And it probably will just be like starting to either show um, the most relevant results or even just putting it in the SERPs themselves. So mm -hmm. that's interesting to think about. Um, I, I did have a, a question as well about you have your article in place, like you found your keywords and, you, and you've written your article. What tool do you use to find the keywords and what other, um, yeah, what other tools do you use besides uh, our refs? Yeah, so Ahrefs is pretty much like the most used tool, at least in our tech suite. And there's a lot of great competitors out there. Um, Moz, SEMrush, like all those big names people cling to and they work great. I've just been using Ahrefs since day one, so it's comfortable and it works well. Um, outside of keyword research tools, we really rely heavily on SEO Wind, which is a fantastic outline creation tool. So it uses AI to pretty much scan all those search results and then takes a look at all of the things I just talked about and consolidates all that information and data and then uses it to our advantage. So we can take a look at, okay, what are the top result headers? What are the headings look like? What is the average word count? What do we suggest that we need there? So prior to SEO wind, it was pretty much, you know, you had 10 tabs open because you needed to look at the 10 top articles. You also had your Google doc open. You had Ahrefs open. You had pretty much more tabs than you knew what to do with. And that was for one article. So if you think about the fact that, you know, right now Trio SEO is, you know, we're publishing about a hundred articles per month. It's a pretty big time commitment just to create one outline. So using SEO win to our advantage, we can pretty much just automate that, a lot of that process, use that data, use AI, and then pass it over to our team of human writers and kind of use AI on the back end to save a lot of that front loaded work and then proceed from there. So it's just been a lifesaver since using it. That's amazing. Um, my The first site that my wife and I built was back in 2007. And yeah, the game has changed a lot since then. Because back then it was like, hey, just make sure you include the keywords in your URL, use it throughout your page, and um, just put a lot of helpful content out there. And that was like 2007. And then we sold a, a business that we had that got SEO traffic that was like probably, I don't know, 2017, something like that. And it gave me fits because we had like, it was basically a high traffic site. And the the majority of the traffic that went there was through inspirational quotes. And it got mm. like one and a half million page views. And it was, it was basically wow. just, it was just ad revenue because you can't monetize something like that. People just wanted to go and look at it. Right. And the amount of sleep that we both lost running that business <laughs> Because it's like, if we screw up one thing on one page, then it could be over, you know? Oh, like, yeah. So heavily dependent on that. 
with your SEO strategy, how do you spread out the risk that way? So you've got multiple pages getting multiple traffic. Yeah, so we we're just really confident in our strategy. I think that 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 has really just been our our true north since day one. Is that we have a lot of experience at our belt. You know, I come in with nearly ten years of experience. My partner Connor Gillivan, who is a you know great SEO creator on LinkedIn. If you're not following him, go check him out. But he also has about ten years experience and built an entire company that exited strictly through SEO, all that sort of stuff. So we have a pretty great you know repertoire of experience to kind of lean on. And so with that, what we do is we just know that, Hey, if we're going to rinse and repeat this process, it's going to, it's proven us success time and time again, like there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. And so when it comes to diversifying risk, you know, you can go after different content categories within that niche or look at experimenting with different types of articles, whatever that may be. But at the end of the day, those who know SEO and know the basics of it, have a lot of trust in that because they're like I said, there's no reason to try to rethink new strategy. It's like, no, let's just double down on what works and we know it works well. And then format a way to constantly improve those processes and upgrade content quality and do all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, the basics don't change. Love that. And uh, I definitely second uh, following Connor on LinkedIn. I, I have <laughs> for several months. He and I actually were collaborating on something. We'll probably go live. Oh, nice. Yeah, just real cool, dude. Uh, and um, take me back to when you first started. I, I would love to hear, like, how did you get into SEO? What was that process like? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of my best friends local, he and I were in an entrepreneurship class in college. And uh, we were in a pretty much like a group project where we had a PowerPoint. And it's like one of those standard class projects where you each talk about yourself and the experience you bring to the table, blah, blah. And uh, he said that he was a business owner during his slide. And I like looked over at him and I was like, right, like, what are you doing on the side? Like, didn't think he had anything going for him. Lo and behold, he was a very successful SEO on the side of kind of just like going to school because it's the right thing to do and his parents, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, yeah, like he, he showed me what SEO was. He told me all about it, showed me his websites. And like, even in college at the time, I think he was making four or five figures per month easy. And this was kind of like building this side business that was crushing. And so I was on the path to do like the finance MBA corporate line. And I was like, yeah, no way. I'm just going to like focus on this SEO thing, figure out what that is. That's obviously working for him. I could figure it out too. And so, yeah, he just became my mentor. We started building websites together. Um, and just started like a small portfolio of sites. And that was my quick path to figure out do's and don'ts, figure out like a, a recipe to create an environment where I could test and fail and rinse and repeat and learn all those things with zero repercussions because they weren't client sites or well-established businesses at that point. And so we just created these micro blogs or affiliate websites as they kind of are well known today and linked into Amazon, made revenue. Long story short, we scaled that up to about 40 different websites within our portfolio. Um, had a team of about 30-ish people globally working on that. It was a pretty large operation um, and just learned SEO by doing. Like that's pretty much the best way to do it. You can read all the books you want, watch all the YouTube videos you want. But at the end of the day, if you don't roll up your sleeves and create some content and publish it, you know, that's the best way to do it. Said. And for somebody who is just starting out, let's say they've already got a, a successful business that maybe they're doing, um, high four, low five figures a month, and they're completely new to the SEO game, what would you recommend that they do in say the next 24 hours to get started? Yeah, I think 24 hours is, I'd say like watch like a, like a how-to basics on YouTube. Cause if you're like completely fresh, like there's a lot of great content out there on YouTube. And I know that like written content, like what we publish on LinkedIn or, you know, anywhere else in an article is hard, but if you're completely new to SEO, it's, semi-dense to grasp. And so having some sort of visual aid or examples to kind of like put two and two together makes all the difference. And then once you go from there and you feel comfortable kind of, you know, getting your hands dirty and writing an article and seeing what all that sort of stuff looks like, you know, or even in looking at some technical SEO and, you know, it's not as scary as everyone seems, but, you know, just seeing what it has to offer, you can get pretty far. But um, I think the other thing too, is just to really be mindful of how long SEO takes to come to life. You know, if you're starting from a scratch site, you know, brand new, 
just set up a domain and you publish your article, well, your article might not even get a couple of visits traffic wise for at least six months, I would say. So, you know, FEO as it is, is really a long-term investment that you have to be willing to commit to and then be able to reap those benefits well down the road. Because if you just say, oh, this isn't working and give up on it, well, of course, it's not going to come to life. So yeah, be patient and just do your homework. Yeah, I totally agree with that. The way that that I used to think of it was paid traffic is like a like a speedboat. You can change direction very quickly, whereas yep. SEO is more like a battleship. It, it, <laughs> takes, it takes longer to get going, but once it does, man, it's it's hard to stop. Yeah, it's a machine. Very cool. So Stephen, tell us a bit more, like where can people find you online to, to learn more about you and your services? Yeah, so right now um, I'm very active on LinkedIn. You can just, you know, search my name, Stephen Schneider. Um, and find me there. You can also find us at trioseo.com. Uh, we have a semi-small growing YouTube channel. We're just pushing out as much content as we get as I do stuff like this or, you know, other podcasts and live events on LinkedIn. So if you're always looking to learn stuff there, you can check us out. But yeah, for the most part, LinkedIn is pretty much where I live. That's excellent. Steven, thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time today. And uh, yeah, we'll be sure to include all those links underneath the uh, the interview so people can find you with ease. And awesome. For anyone else listening, please do visit funnelcandy.com for more sweet marketing advice. And if you are looking for articles to be written for you, uh, please do contact Stephen and the rest of the cool guys at Trio SEO. Thanks so much, awesome. Stephen. Thanks, Adam.